Alrighty then, what it do guys and welcome to an A to C series of Warframes. Today we're kicking off the series with Ash and we'll be looking into a bit of his trivia, fashion, ability kit and builds. So let's just get straight into it. When viewing Ash in game, you can see his left arm is covered by smoke, a continuous ventilation. This may have something to do with Ash's smokescreen ability, as he uses the same arm for animation when casting himself invisible. When Ash was originally created, he was concepted as a female Warframe with two previous names, Ninja and then Smoke, but all of this was later scrapped as he was then released. Now, as for the fashion, I do just want to quickly disclaim that I am color deficient, so I stick to a lot of white, black, gray, gold, red, and sometimes blue. But I'm using the Ash Prime helmet with the Ash Koga skin, which is a Dulux. I'm using the Obron Noble animation set. I am currently running no chest attachment, but I have Edo Prime armor set for the shoulders and the knees. I would use the Smoke and Body Ephemera if I had it, but I currently do not. I'm currently using the Sildug Cyandana, which is a Tanagen. I have the Infati Sekhara on the left and right arms. And I have no front and back regalias. As for the color palette, I thought it was appropriate to pick smoke. So my primary is row one, column 18. My secondary is row four, column 11. My tertiary is row two, column two. My accents, row one, column 18. And finally my energy, row one, column one. So if you guys wanna go and copy it, you're more than welcome to go ahead and do so. Now let's get into the abilities. And we'll start off with his passive, hemorrhage. Any slash procs that are procced by Ash or a weapon that Ash is using will deal 25% more slash damage and last 50% longer than usual. Next up we have Shuriken which is Ash's one. Ash throws out two shurikens which will seek out enemies dealing 500 slash damage with a 100% status chance proc for bleed. You will also get bonus bleed damage over time if the shuriken hits the enemy's head. This ability is genuinely ramped up because of Ash's passive. This ability also scales off strength mods and efficiency mods. Next we have his smoke screen, which is his second ability. Ash throws down a smoke bomb that will make him and his companion invisible for eight seconds. Enemies within the 10 meter cast radius will be staggered. Now this ability scales off duration mods, range mods, and efficiency mods. Then we have teleport, Ash's third ability. Ash will teleport to the target within 60 meters. This includes enemies, allies, companions, hostages, chiropods, excavators, and destructible objects. If targeted an enemy, it will open them up to a melee finisher attack. This will require line of sight, which means you need to be able to vis visually see your target. This ability scales off range mods and efficiency mods. And lastly, we have Bladestorm, which is Ash's fourth and final ability. Ash will target enemies within the direction of his aim and reticle for assassination by his shadow clones. Staring at the same enemy for longer, or by dragging your aim and reticle back across the same target, will add extra marks to the target. The more marks that the target has, the shadow clone will return back to them and attack more. Each target can stack up to three marks individually. So Ash can actually have up to two Shadow Clones active at the same time. If there are three enemies, two of them will receive damage simultaneously, and then the third enemy will receive his damage once the first two animations are over, so they take it in turns. Each strike completed by a Shadow Clone consumes one mark and performs a finisher attack on the enemy, which deals up to 2,000 true damage and a 100% status chance for Slash Brock. The finisher attack animation can be sped up by using melee attack speed mods and arcing strike. Also by some other Warframe abilities like speed from Volt, penance from Harrow and Warcry from Valkyr. Each strike that the shadow clones perform counts as a melee combo counter. And during Bladestorm, Ash can cast his teleport for no additional energy to join in with the clones. To add to that, you still need the desired energy amount to cast teleport, but it will not charge you for it. So if you have no energy, then you will not be able to join in. Ash will strike once with an animation, however his clones will still continue doing their strikes if there are more marks remaining on the target. And also, Bladestorm will cost less per target marked whilst invisible, so using your smoke screen can definitely go and help with the utility of your efficiency. And now we'll just move on to the builds. 
And here I have a general Ash build. This is mostly focused on using his first, second and third abilities and not so much on his fourth ability. He can still benefit from using his Blade Storm, but I'm focusing mostly on survival plus armor stripping and then fatal teleport to kill off any enemies that I may struggle against. The Seeking Shuriken augment says, hits expose weaknesses on enemies, reducing their armor by 70% for eight seconds. The armor stripping on, his, on this mod can be ramped up to 100% at 145% strength. So any higher strength doesn't really help out with this mod. The duration can be pushed up as well, hence the high duration on my build. So as for this build, I have 100% armor stripping and 20 seconds as a debuff to enemies with armor like the Grinny. Smokescreen, which is Ash's second ability, is mostly focused around duration. It shares the exact same durational length as the Seek and Shuriken Augment, both with a base of 8 seconds. So again, duration is key here, allowing for good survivability with Smokescreen's visibility and the debuffing of enemies with Seek and Shuriken. I also use Rolling Guard as a mod because you cannot refresh Smokescreen. Instead, you wait for the invisibility to run out. So when I have around one second remaining before enemies can see me again, I simply roll to make myself invulnerable and then recast my smoke screen safely without any interruptions. I myself don't personally need a lot of range on my builds. It's mostly affecting his teleport and blade storm abilities, but I find both of their base range to be more than acceptable. If you do want to add a little more range, then you can do so if it fits your playstyle better. The Fatal Teleport Augment says, Teleport will perform a finisher on the target, dealing 200% extra damage. Now 50% of the energy cost is refunded on a kill. What's mostly nice about this is that the base teleport ability opens enemies up to finishers. However, with this Augment, you will go straight into a finisher attack regardless. The extra damage can be stacked up with a mod from daggers called Covert Lethality. So, checking into our Bala build on our dagger, we are using mods here to help the damage and utility of finisher attacks. Straight up flat damage like Prime Pressure Point, Spoiled Strike, and 2x Elementals of North Wind and Prime Fever Strike combination for Viral. And then the attack speed mods and only mods Arcanes and Warframe abilities can help speed up the finisher animation. So Prime Fury and Gladiator Vice uh, to help sp speed things up. The Bala Dagger does not actually speed anything up with the uh, particular grip and links that you take. That doesn't contribute towards the animation speed. I do realize Spoiled Strike has a negative against attack speed, but we still have plenty to work with, so it's all going to be fine. Finally, Covert Lethality for 100 extra damage on finishers and Finish and Touch to help add that overall finisher damage. Teleport and Bladestorm can both proc Arcane Strike for attack speed on my Ash, my Warframe, which will help with finisher animation speed, and Exodia Hunt on my Zor for lifesteal towards Ash and my Warframe. These two builds together, I can one-shot a level 165 enemy without any issue. So then, with all that being said, I'll leave a little gameplay footage of me playing Ash to show people what kind of ability cycle and movement I do. I really thank you guys for coming to check out my A to C series on YouTube. I did spend a day with a frame on my Twitch.tv streaming account to learn as much as possible. So if you ever want to see the process of how I learned, then you can check the link in the description. That being said, I unfortunately did not save the Ash Fod, so I apologize, but for the next few frames, uh, you should hopefully have footage of me learning them step by step. As for the fashion and builds, please take what suits you and discard what does not. Warframe is about variety. There is no right and wrong about how you want to customize your setup. So if you have some unique builds, you can always share them with me. Uh, also, you can tell me how you guys found Ash in the comments below. I personally think Ash is an exceptionally fun frame to play. Very good for solo based content and his survival is top notch. If you don't own mods like Rolling Guard then please do not hesitate to use Vitality to protect yourself. Yes, even on the stealth frame, there's no harm in it. Take your time to learn how to position to better areas and understand the enemies and factions you are fighting. This way you can safely recast your smoke screen and then get back into the action. So. Until next time guys, I would appreciate any feedback and ratings on this video, but overall just a thank you that you guys came here to watch and maybe you learned a thing or two. Regardless, I'll catch you guys in the flippy, thank you so much for watching, I'm out of here, peace!